Jacob, it's a, it's a long year, a lot of injuries and all these sort of things. Uh, some teams fade at the end of the year, others get stronger. What's the motivation in the last month of the regular season? What's the motivation on Saturday? Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing is just everybody remembers what you do in November, right? You know, you could say we lose a game here, lose a game there, win one here, but it's all going to come down to these last four games about bowl eligibility and you know, how we finish. It's all about how you finish versus how you start. So I think that that whole thing is kind of what's driving us to, to keep getting better and to try to just keep pushing through the season. Eric, how much tape last week did you guys uh, get to watch on Kentucky for games past? And did you watch Kentucky this Saturday? Yeah, I mean, obviously we um, started on them and trying to get everything start, uh, figured out and have a week, a week jump on them. And yeah, you watched the game this weekend and and they ended up losing, but that, that defense is still a tough defense, and they're still obviously one of the better teams in SEC. And um, So we're still just got to go into it and prepare like any other week. Yeah. Jacob, what were some of the things during the open week that you felt like you accomplished personally, mm -hmm. and what outside of football felt really good to be able to do? Um, <clears throat> obviously, in a bye week, you're saying outside of football, mm -hmm. it gives – everyone, especially like the younger guys, a chance to catch up academically um, and to get every all their ducks in a line, I guess you could say. Um, so kind of take our, our mind off of football and kind of really focus on, on school, which is inevitably what we're all here to do. Um, for me personally, kind of the same thing. I uh, just trying try to focus on this master's degree that I'm working on and um, getting all my classes right and just trying to clear my head before this last little four game stretch. Is there a fan of that? Jacob, just how have you seen Hendon grow from when he was inserted like, against Pittsburgh to uh, the Alabama game? Yeah, Hendon is a guy that has always like played with confidence and just his confidence radiates. It's not really a cockiness, just he knows his pre preparation is, is right and he does things the right way. But I think that that's just grown ever since we've seen him blow up against all the, you know, in all these different games against these different opponents. He realizes that he, you know, he is what everyone's trying to say he is. Like he's, he's a good player and and he knows we trust him, and so just kind of getting the experience under his belt with us. I know he played a lot at, at VT, but um, with this squad, I think he's getting, he's really starting to settle in. Patrick? Jacob, how would you kind of assess and evaluate how you and Princeton have played at the tight end spot? What have you done well, and what do you think you guys can do better in the last month of the season? Yeah, um, I think one thing that we've done well is we play hard. Um, we're flying around, trying to do our job the best of our abilities. There's a lot of little details that um, a lot of people don't see that kind of goes into our footwork and our hand placement, you know, and <clears throat> all these different things. And I feel like we've caught the ball well, um, done stuff with it whenever we catch the ball. So just trying to be consistent and just continue to, to work on those small things, like I said, that not many people see from the outside. What? No one likes that. I'm going to go to Jacob is a competitive guy who knows what it's sort of like for, for a team when you don't play a very good game and mm -hmm. you, you want to go get it the next week. Is there part of you that, that looks at that Kentucky game last week and goes, I know that was probably their worst game of the year and they're probably not going to come out and do that again? Yeah, I mean, obviously <clears throat> a team like that comes off a loss and, and they're fired up to get back out there and, and take it out on the next guy, I guess, because that's the same thing that we do. You know, say we lose a game and it's like, all right, on to the next one and they're going to correct their mistakes that they made and we just got to go in there and play our best ball, and it'll just come down to it. What about the, the, the way that – I know Patrick a minute ago asked you all about the – asked you about you and Princeton in the passing game. And mm -hmm. I know you had the big catch against Ole Miss, but it seems like there haven't been maybe as many targets the past few weeks for the tight ends. Is that just the way those games have flowed? Was that the plan to change it up? What, what's been the, your take on that? Yeah, you had it. Just the way the games flowed. And um, going into a game, obviously we have – a number of plays that we think that we're going to get and you know these balls that are quote unquote like supposed to come to us and that's part of it like if it just doesn't work out that way we never get into that situation where that call is going to be is going to be made so um, it's just about keeping your head down doing what you have to do and, and just being a selfless player and understanding that you know I'd rather see set out there catch you know catch a touchdown for 65 yards to see JP run down the field that brings just as much joy to me as it does for me to catch a ball so um, as long as we're moving the ball down the field and we're being successful, then that's really genuinely all I care about. Adam? Now that you've played a lot of games with Hendon, what do you know about his game and how he plays that you wouldn't have known just from, from practice in preseason? Um, he's tough, man. 
he's a really tough guy, and I know Coach has talked about his resilience and the way he's fought through, you know, a lot of the little nicks and things that he's got going on. But um, just watching him bounce up after taking hits and spin moving and getting hit in the back and all that stuff, like it's crazy just watching him pop up and be like, yo, let's go, come on, we got to push tempo because he's just so focused on the mission and what we got to, what do we got to get accomplished. So I think just his toughness has, has shown me a lot. Jacob, you've seen guys hit the transfer portal plenty of times. Um, not, since you're a leader, how do you react to Harrison Bailey leaving and not finishing out, out this season? And what, what was your reaction to that? Yeah, I mean, my answer is always going to be the same. Um, I care about them and they care about me, but I have to understand that if I was in that situation, like how would I want my teammates that I've been, you know, battling with and going through all stuff with, how do I want them to react, right? And so <clears throat> the way I think about it is like, I want what's best for him because he's my friend. So if that's what's best for him, I just have to kind of accept that. And um, that's really just all of it. Obviously I wish him the best of luck and I'm sure we'll be in touch about where he's going and, and what he's doing. So I'm just excited to see what he's able to do with his future and get an opportunity to play. Any more? How about those other young tight ends coming along, Miles, some of those guys? Yeah, um, the biggest improvement that I've seen has been their commitment to, like Coach calls it, the process. Like, I love seeing them start to care about, you know, these little things that we're talking about that, you know, don't necessarily make you an amazing football player, but that are going to grow you as a person, which will then in turn help you become a better player. So I'm, I'm just happy to see that they're buying into the things that me and P. Fan and Coach Golish are trying to tell them. Um, and they're just growing as people. It's really, it's really good to see. Thanks, Jacob. Yep. Thank you. Well, Javante Payton here.